In a world with entirely too many shows about cars, this is another pointless automotive podcast. Hello, friends. Welcome to another pointless episode of another pointless automotive podcast. How are you, Chadwick? I'm doing fine, Frank. Uh, and I want to, you know, first off, how are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. I'm I'm unchanged in clothing and appearance since the last time we met, which is same, okay. He kept the same thing on him for a week, folks. If you're watching the video on YouTube, which you should, mm-hmm. another pointless automotive podcast, APA yeah. podcast on YouTube. Check it out, please. Subscribe. Um, free, free through December and in January. It's going up to like, I don't know, two hundred dollars to fucking subscribe. Yeah, yeah. Why not? Pay is, curtain. Wait, is it is that, pay yeah. curtain, buddy? That's right. Yeah. Payola. Um, so yeah, get in where you fit in. And uh, yeah, we are here at it again. We're doing something a little bit different than last week. Because last week we we did what we we <laughs> what didn't we do? Well, it, it was a it was a um, it was it was that was for us. That was a selfish episode. We ha- we had to get out some things. Yeah, we had to we had to work out some ish fleet, if you fleet, will. Fleet reduction went into remission, and we went we back definitely. To our- our old selves, my friend. We- Fleetwood Max. Um, but we want to do something a little bit different this episode, which oh. was um, let's let's talk about some historical stuff. And mm-hmm. and this is something we've done before. I, I believe we did a, a Ford versus Chevy um, situation back back in our Utes. Um, we're gonna do it again. Another grudge match. Yes. Episode. Um, a, a, a bit He's more really Teutonic. Fun. This one. It, we were thinking about doing. Mercedes Benz versus BMW. What a matchup! What a matchup, yeah. my friend. Yeah, and 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 we're kind of flying into this ass first, and by that I mean we have very limited structure on how we're putting this together. But we're just gonna like go through it, like, hey, like, powder here's, toast. Here's man. a time period. Here's a car. Powder to vitamin F. Um, and yeah, we're just we're just gonna we're gonna go. Hey, like this car versus this car or this, um this genre of car from Mercedes versus this other genre of car mm. from BMW. Um, so yeah, I mean, w- without further ado, what, what's probably, I mean, how pass, do we want to pen this out? Pass, like pass me the peel, my friend. I'm going to, I'm going to slip down right off the beginning here. Oh, uh, oh, here comes, here comes a rock. This is fighting. This is a fighting one. We're going to start off very contentious. Uh, best touring car, Frank, we're uh, in this matchup. I'm pitting the E30 M3 from BMW against mm-hmm. its predecessor, the Mercedes Benz 190E 2.3 16V. The old Cosworth powered motor. Um, God damn, this is interesting. I, I want to say, and it's funny because I, I, I feel like history is going, I don't know. Mm. I, I'm gonna put it this way I've always, in my mind, I've preferred. The 190E. And I know you've owned one of those cars. Mm-hmm. And I know you've almost owned an E30 M3. I've I've never owned either of the special versions of that car, but um I've I've got a fair amount of seat time in E30s of a bunch of different ilks, mm. 318, 325, sedans, coupes, convertibles, automatic they're, manual. They're um, all absolutely fantastic automobiles. They are pretty good. The 325, I think, is actually... Here's the thing. In Ooh. my mind... 318 big... IS is like a poor man's M3. It's a nice little motor. 91 only, though. I've never actually driven a 91 318. I've only driven an early car, like an M10-powered car, like an 84, mm-hmm. which is... Fair enough. Just feel, Which just feels like a pudgy E21, which itself feels like a pudgy 2002. So I, I think that the, the, the hardest, the, the biggest strike against the E30 M3 is, well, there's two things. I think the E36 M3 is a better car. Mm. And I think, oh. I think an E33 25, it's less, far less special, but it's kind of a better car. Like that, that, that M20 motors, not super powerful, but it's butter smooth. Yeah. It sounds really good. The Torx. chassis in most situations is better. That that S14 motor is 
there. It's fine. Hmm. Doesn't do a ton for me. Mm. I really like. I've never. I've. I've never driven a 190e 2.3 16. Very cool. But but I I have an enormous amount of time in a regular ass 2.3 190e um, auto. So in the script, but yeah. the interior build quality is massive. Those Recaros in the, the hand- E16V. Sure. Yeah. Like, but even just a yeah, regular, yes. the regular car is good. Is so well built. The, well, the handling, the suspension is great. There's just so much to like about just even the standard ass car. Mm-hmm. Um, world's greatest turning radius. Period. It's ridiculous. Yeah. And so I like those cars a lot. I. I I don't know. I would rather even even money. I think I like the 190e better. Okay. Certainly, when you take money into consideration, I'm going 190e. How about you, sir? I know you had you've had one of these cars. Yeah, and they're fantastic. I even had the dogleg manual, which is how the manual came in the 190e 16v. Mm-hmm. I think it looks better, and that's a tough one because the uh, e30 M3 is. I think it's probably one of the best looking BMWs ever made. I really do. I like the flared fenders. The proportions are beautiful. Uh, The grill is just, that's E30 grills, or that's it for BMW. I think that's the peak of grill for uh, kidney grills. Uh, I also would say that- (laughs) Not the new, not the new like M4. (laughs) The beaver teeth or however they're being being called. Mm -hmm. Uh, The size of the E30 M3 is good. I really like that small, compact uh, body. The handling was really good on an E30. I think slightly better than the 190E. You got to remember the 190E kind of came out first, and then they uh, BM M3 came out and obviously trumped it in touring car in this category. And then Mercedes answered back with various evolutions of their 190 with huge spoilers, huge body kits. Also fucking sexy. Uh, M3 had an evolution or whatever of itself. It's just... It's very tough. I got to give the mechanical and driving edge to the M3 in this case, though. It is a better. Uh, dude, they know. handle so well, and the know. engine is so. So that's my that's my argument. The 325 is absolutely smooth, and in most conditions, a better motor, like a better daily motor, a better right. highway cruising motor. The M3 with its revy nature for motorsports or spirited driving, that kind of gives it the edge, in my opinion. Just in that use case. Here, here's the thing. I think if if you were to sit an E30 M3, mm-hmm. and I like I like how we're going. I I feel like we're going with the most controversial uh, oh, of this entire to- match, yeah. like right off the right off the goddamn rip. Um, <laughs> if my, my thought is this: if you were to put a hell rot red mm-hmm. E30 M3 next to a what they had that metallic black that was almost a gray and yeah. then they had and then Champagne they had the smoke beige. yeah the smoke silver um i think it's like beige color silver and that was it like those were the only two colors in that car you but pick one of those you put them side by side the e30 will will for almost everybody be the more special looking car. And I think the market has spoken. Like the market has dictated that it's the most special car. Yeah. That said, I f- the delta between a regular 190E and the 2.360 <laughs> is so big. Yeah. yeah. It's grown compared to an E30 M3 and a a nice 325 IS like like the the difference there is not enormous the Kazi uh, 190s took a long time to mature in value that yeah. was way too late on that vehicle uh and a lot of them got roughed up uh poorly maintained poorly taken care of but it, can I you see both of those cars next to each other mm-hmm. there's not a loser those are two there's, there's not a loser gorgeous automobiles they're gorgeous. But I mean, in way the thing. in way different ways, so. Correct. Like, like the E30 Dude, M3 correct, is though. like the E30 M3 screams like motorsports theater. The one the one DE, it looks good, but it's far more staid, right? That's, like it's far more spoiler, handsome. Baby. That little subtle spoiler the doesn't spoiler, the, me. the little fenders, like the little the little like um 
uh, rocker trims. Like yeah, it's... the flares, everything's a little mm-hmm. just that subtle. Like I don't but know, but it's not I as think... loud, like visually as any thirty M three. But like the the trunk toupee and the spoiler mm-hmm. and the box flares and the you know they they filled in the rear wind. Like they did an enormous amount of arrow on that car. Would and the it... and the colors were way louder. Yeah, I had the Euro headlights on my 190, which helped a lot. A I lot, think. yeah. yeah the, the seal headlights. beams. headlights. Yeah, the seal beams kind of take it back a little bit, the recessed seal beams. Mm-hmm. But uh, you put the Euros on there, and the so the here's the thing, though. The interior on the Mercedes is far better, in my opinion. Absolutely. Yeah, it uh, is. It, the fit the, the finish on that car. The seats. My Recaros looked like they were brand new. And that was everything in that car. The wood, it was actual wood. The uh, dog leg is probably mm-hmm. the best highlight of both those cars. Having a dog leg transmission and an affordable car is kind of cool. Uh, yeah. And in the sporty driving car, so you're going to use it. So it's it's super cool. Uh, great, great car. So, so okay, so I'm I'm taking 190. Are you are you was that it? Are you going E30? M M3 on this one. Okay. It's just if I mean value. Obviously, if we factor, value, I would respectfully obviously. disagree. Yeah, yeah and, but I, I think even if, if it was Can't even lose. money, I just I've all but that's I've always had a soft spot for that car. Like when I when I was in high school, one of my very closest friends was like the first to get the like his driver's license out of our group of friends, and he had a hand me down eighty six one ninety e two point three, just rate not not a sixteen, just an eight valve automatic one hundred and twenty horsepower. And he put it was like dark blue over pewter two tone with a tobacco interior, Ooh. and he he put i uh, sport springs on it, um and and shocks and he put like knockoff sixteen inch mono blocks on it. It was it was it was actually pretty. At the time, we're like, oh, it's an automatic. In retrospect, it was pretty freaking cool. It was pretty dope. So it was had- cool. I had the so the 190 E16 V's kind of came with a monoblock, but it was very mm-hmm. small. I think it was a 15. I put the 16s from uh, I'm gonna forget. I used to know it was one of the uh, SLs. I can't remember the bigger yeah. mo- one size bigger, and that really worked because that car has monstrous fenders or uh, mm-hmm. you know, wheel wells. So it filled it just that little bit more, and it, oh, it looks so good with the flush Euro headlights. It's a, it's a tough choice, but I think I like the BMW better because a maintenance on the BMW is a little easier too. That's a factor. You, you know, what's funny though, is if you think I, I th- just thinking back to that time period of the eighties, right? J- those were the two special cars in their compact cars, right? The yeah. overarching, like the regular 190e versus the e30 as much as i like that 190e if we were talking about the regular car and not the special cars e30 i think i have to i think i have to give it to the e30 because that that 325 is just so good and there was a coupe and a convertible and a wagon that we never got um they both i think i would go there they both had their shitty gauge cluster things some video bullshit uh yeah that's everything 16v had like uh fuel injection was really complicated on that car if it ever got out of whack uh sure and wasn't maintained uh i feel like both of those required some good maintenance but those both those engines are kind of special in their own way so it's a tough one what about um should we just should we just move up in size oh you want to just go like mid mid size right what do you got i what's interesting is so i mean mid size you've got e-class right Mm. of of various iterations right so you had the the the, the w124 or you had the the 210 which came in 97 yep. and then you had uh the 211 right which started in 2003 or the five series right e28 e34 e39 mm, that's a good one. 60 and i oh, reflexively i almost would want to to break it down even more like by decade. And I don't know if that makes sense. Right. But like That's, who would win yeah. that, who would win that fight in the eighties, who would win it in the nineties, who would win it in the two thousands. Cause I think, I think, I think we have two different, like, I think the winners change in my opinion. I, I don't know about I, yours. I'm with you. Let's, let's walk through that together. Cause I, I think you bring up a good point. Cause that fight went back and forth quite a bit. Eighties. Mm-hmm. So you had E28. Ding. 
That's mine. Are you going E20? I, I secretly think the E28 deserves way more respect than it gets. I think it's a fucking I good looking car. Really, I really like the E20. I think the E28 M5. It's beautiful. Is a what? great, great car. I, I that I, it's a it's a motorsports like stalwart of an engine, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, that was in that was in the M6. That was in the M1. Inline sixes were BMW's bread and butter. Then they were special. Yep. Um. As compared to, but what's interesting is I feel like I'm I'm having the opposite. The argument I just had with myself mm-hmm. on the E30 versus the the W201 in the compact in the 80s, I'm I I almost flip flop that when we're coming to the midsize. I think the regular ass W124 Mercedes, so that that 300e, 400e, which came later. Mm. Um, those the regular car I think is better than the regular E twenty eight. Yeah, let's keep let's keep this discussion to the regulars. I think that's the proper yeah. way to do it. Let's do that because yeah. because yeah, let's do that because really the special the special in that one was the the five hundred e which came in the nineties and was like Porsche. okay, and even in the M five I prefer the M five over. But if we're just going the 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 basic bitch mode, if you will, um. I think I think I'm going W124. I I just hmm. they had a convertible, they had a wagon, they had a sedan, they had a coupe. That's true. So I think there's points there. I really do like the E28, like a yeah. like a like a 535, a 535 535 IS. With the off good center, car, the M30. center exhaust, right? Mm-hmm. It's just, just a little bit. Just enough. Uh, uh, <laughs> it's good, uh, good car. These are good fucking cars. Question though. Yes. If I if I'm saying like, well, they had a coupe and they had a bit of it, would would we wrap the six series of the era in would we consider that the five series coupe, the E24? You, ha- you have to combine because that's- those two. That's how BMW divided. It's legitimately the same, right? Like how the three and M3 and M4 are interchangeable in modern dialect. Right. Except for door But things to consider. When it comes to full sizes, which maybe we'll talk in a minute, the S class, there was an S class coupe. There was no seven coupe. This could is this is the seven is the full size coupe a six series? No. At least in the eighties. Or is the mid size coupe? The six series no the 850 il or the 850 that's, I. that's, the, on, that's the 90s that's the future that's the future the future baby. Uh, yeah that's a good point they didn't have a well the six series yeah i don't know i think the six well the six always shared the five though right it's weird it's almost like six it's almost like six is directly between five and seven <laughs> wait like the numbers used <laughs> to be used to be the displacement of the engines in bmws well i know right <laughs> Porsche, Porsche 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 Taycan Turbo is is, is screaming <laughs> at its right. preemptive grave. Um, and six three like, badges think, on Mercedes. So Wait. so we don't have another uh, seven hour episode here. Mm. Um, I think if it comes to the regular midsize in the eighties, I'm going one twenty four. Sounds like you're going yep. E twenty eight. You know what? I'm gonna go. I'm gonna because of the ver- the the uh, variety. I would I would give it to Mercedes in this one. I think the, I do think D twenty eight's a five thirty five. A clean one is it's an absolute car. gem of a car to have. Those but, pull uh, money now. The, they you're used to, dude. Those were six, Mm-mm. seven, eight k cars for like lower mileage, clean like examples. Really nice ones. Yeah. Yeah. Now it's like a thirty thousand dollar car. It hurts. We are we are old men on porches shaking our canes and everything. <laughs> what about the nineties? <laughs> Does this does this script flip in the nineties? Mm. You know, so we've got e e twenty e e thirty four slash e thirty nine because you get mm-hmm. to nineteen ninety six and now you're e thirty nine. Yeah, as compared to still the W one twenty four and then the the W two ten. See, I flip the script now. I go BMW. I'm going BMW. Yes. Well, the E39 was absolutely yeah. brilliant. I and love the E34. The E39 is an all timer. E30 is an absolute benchmark. I know we're not talking about special. I remember E34 sure. M5 you could, though. though. 
another great inline six motorsports derived engine. That's oh, sorry, that's E34 M5. That's what I said. I thought you said E39. E39, no, 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 not, E39, E39 is the V8, yeah, which yes. is still no. E34 incredible. had another E34 M5 had another beautiful inline six motorsports derived, yep. absolutely fun motor. Fun motor, reliable motor, expensive if and when you need to do stuff on it, motor. Sure. But really, really, I, I, I actually think the E34 M5 is kind of slept on because so many people are into hmm. the E39 M5 for good reason. Good reasons. And then the first M5, right? The E28. And so I feel like the, the one that gets lost in the shuffle is the E34 M5. And that's Dude, a very good car, isn't a that very handsome car. With the Chevy SS, didn't they benchmark the E39 M5, that entire car? E39 M5, yes. What did I say? What am I saying? I said E39. You keep saying, you keep, you keep no. saying E39. Yeah, that's the yeah, one. The that's V8. the V8 car. The Chevy yeah. SS, was because yes. it was the super sedan for Chevy at the time. Mm -hmm. They wanted to benchmark against BMW's super sedan, which was, they I, were just shy of 400. I think it was 392 with the SAE or whatever. What's, what's funny is I've heard so many versions of that, that same story, but for different cars. And by that, I mean like, oh, yeah, did you know this benchmarks the E39? And, oh, and this, the, uh, the E39 M5 was the benchmark for the, you know, the loose The, 19, the 1988 whatever. Mazda MPV really bench. <laughs> yeah, it was the benchmark. Yeah. And to the point where I almost feel like it's all just like lore bait for the E39. You know, it's no, like there was a big story. E39 collectors God, are, are putting now it you're making me But no, I've myself. heard this. Yeah. But I, I think I've heard the same story. Like a bunch of E39s. Yeah. I, th I think for the SS, though, because that makes sense, because that's like a fucking apples to apples <clears throat> comparison. And for what it's worth, I really like the W210 Mercedes mm -hmm. and the that original W210 E55. Yeah. Really cool car. Really good. Faster than it should be. Um, interiors are pretty good. Probably not E39 good. Like that's when they started like kind of chipping away, yeah, at, at cost cutting a little bit. But um, I still really like those cars. Um, that said, I, I got to go five series. I I agree. I think the, the 30, E thirty nine was so nice. Um, I do think the E thirty E thirty four is pretty slapped on too. Um, yeah. those are very sharp looking cars. Two thousand. Oh, E thirty nine still running strong on BMW side. Yeah, and then you have E6, and then you have E60, though. Which is kind of a... a Comes in 2004. Sheep, if you will, yeah. That V10 and the M5 is batshit in a good way. The M1. The rest of it, the rest of the car. I drive and, and Bengal era styling, which is what? actually, I think, aged okay. It's aged pretty good. It's pretty, yeah. it's pretty stayed, in my opinion, but it, that yeah. allowed it to age and not look too crazy. But... The, SMG. I think a, a sneaky sleeper is the 550i manual. Even though reliability yeah. aside, and we're talking normal cars, <laughs> I think the 550i is reliability a, aside. It's a compelling package, man. You get a six-speed manual, <laughs> a naturally aspirated V8 rear-wheel drive. How and cheap can you get one of those now? They're still dirt cheap. They're dirt cheap because I know why. The valve guide I'm seals, saying... timing, timing. <laughs> Timing the cover seals, leaks, everything just Venos, uh, water, <laughs> the water cooled, out. <laughs> water cooled alternators. Yeah, there's just like a there's a bunch of nonsense. I'm just saying with. though, for the for the amount of car you get for the price point, I don't think that can be. Have you have you driven one of those V10 uh, M5s? I have not. I've driven F fucking rocket shit. Did you press the M button to unlock the full 500? I don't remember. I you drove one, in dude. You might have four been in 400 ago. mode. Yeah, it's 500. You have to press the M button. I, I must have because it was a it was a I must missile. I was hitting I mean, everything. It, it, I think boogies. You know what does um, boogie? Also the S7 with the V10. I've driven one of those Audi. Oh, okay. Yeah. You know, um all wheel drive too, so it's no drama, just speed. All all of that said, I think 2000 I'm going I'm going I'm going BMW. Or sorry, sorry, Mercedes. Whoa. No, I'm sticking with it because the E39 got more refined, which was a E39, great... E39 is, feels more like a 90s car to me. I, and I don't I know why. It, see, I'm the opposite. I think of it more of a 2000s car. <sighs> it's too... It looks like it's, a 2000s It's funny because it splits... It's because it, it's 96 to 03. So, like, it almost perfectly perfect. splits it. 
it's way more 90 or way more 2000 styling to me because it's like it's a little it's a little softer yep but not overly it's not like it's not no, like but like jelly bean tortoises everything in the early 2000s was that kind of soft uh some 90s cars got way too bubbly but the bmw's always been kind of reserved i i don't know I but what's it funny though is like think about it the w the w210 mercedes mm-hmm. was kind of kind of ran the same route right because that was 97 to 2002 i wonder if there's some competition and then 2003 <laughs> i know it's almost like they're having some grudge match or something <laughs> but like I, I don't know. Like I just, but it it to your point, that car feels far more nineties. But then you have the next when you once you got to two thousand three, and you have the W two eleven E fifty five, the supercharged E fifty five. Talk about a that rocket is a ship. monster car. It's a fucking rocket. That's a highway. It's a hot rod. Is what deep it is. purple highway star. That's what that thing is. Like, oof. that that V that V ten Mercedes is faster. The E fifty, the supercharged E fifty five. Oh, you meant V ten BMW. Sorry, yes. <laughs> the the like, V ten, the V ten, that E six E M five, the V ten is Bonkers. faster. That E fifty five is more unhinged. In it, like in a, it fe- it feels like an old school like muscle, muscle car. car hot rod. Yeah, yeah it is. Like a, it, it's, it's a German muscle car. Mm-hmm. The E sixty three, they didn't get rid of it. You know. Yeah, and then the E63 came along. They embraced it. When did that come? Oh, seven? Six or seven or seven or eight. Yeah, I should have done my homework. Should have done my own research. I want to say eight. I want to say eight on that one for some reason. Hmm. And then, and that thing is is, is also bonkers. Um, So based on that, I I don't know. I I think I go back to Mercedes. But so for the entire regular car run, I, yeah. I'm going to give Mercedes the edge because along they always built a variety of vehicles. You could always get a Mercedes, not counting special stuff. You could always get a convertible. You could always get a coupe. You could always get a sedan. You could always get a wagon. Mm -hmm. Yep. And sometimes they rebadge them a little bit like, oh, we don't have an E-class coupe anymore, but we have a CLK. Boom. Or like, or we have like, it's, it's, they kind of rebadge them a little bit or they, they did a little bit of Tom Foolery. Yeah. Front Um, end, real change. That's all you did. Yep. But, uh, I got a I got a bigger one to talk about here. Oh, um, how big? Th- probably the biggest thing we've talked about yet. Let's just do it. Special Motorsports Performance Branches M versus AMG. And this question. Is, yeah. Can can we rope in pre a pre merger AMG stuff? So like the AMG Hammer we, stuff like that. Like, yeah, if you have an analog M that you want, or you know, an M running parallel to that, that you want to draw a conclusion, probably. Uh, yeah, but be like M six versus like AMG Hammer, but that does I don't know. I, that's kind of special. Yeah, yeah, um, it's pretty different in general. Uh, yeah, let's just do M versus AMG overarching battle royale. Yeah, and Give I, I want to say let's let's maybe. I don't want to go super, super modern because both of those brands within their respective brands have been pretty heavily watered down. Yeah, so let's right? do... So let's You've obviously... got like your M235 and your M760, whatever. So Let's start mid-90s. So E36 yeah. versus C63. That's where we'll start the line and then we'll just go to the mid-2000s. I think that's when both of them are still very different but competitive. I think... And this is going to sound like car guy pedantic, but because manual transmission, right? You're looking at my notes. M. Like it's, it's yeah. yeah. I, I really like a C36 and a C43. Probably like those cars could have been better than the E36 M3 at the time. Yeah, with a good gearbox, absolutely. With a good gearbox, and and I like I like gearbox. those I like the I like a lot of that car. Mm-hmm. About C forty three is cool car. C thirty six is like I like that car a lot. It's a little bit hamstrung by its transmission, especially the early ones, where it was a four speed instead of a five speed. 
Yeah, but later Mercedes built some of the, they were ZFs, right? So a lot of them mm-hmm. are very stout automatics. Uh, so stout that SRT put that in their challengers, you know, magnums and stuff. So that says a lot that it can hold. And it became, kind of- a, it became a tiptronic. Mm-hmm. In 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 like e uh, in in 996 and 997 Porsches and stuff before they got their PDK sorted out. Good, so, um, I mean, as far as stout, it's not a bad gearbox. It's a good gearbox, but it's missing a pedal. It's totally missing a pedal. Uh, but here's the deal, man. I think I think of Mercedes as more highway crushing monsters. They're AMGs. Mm-hmm. Uh, they were always kind of the muscle car of yes. the sports car. M cars were actually motor sports cars. Like you could take an M3 to the track. Not that yeah. you can't take an AMG to the track, but you're rowing the gears. It's going to be that traditional uh, kind of like conventional motorsports outing if you take an M car. So I I, I agree with you. Uh, and this is a tough one because AMG made some very special cars, uh, like some absolutely like just pure weapons. Uh, and horsepower, AMG, I always thought it was funny how they edged out BMW. I always thought that was like a really clever uh, ploy. And my, one of my favorite matchups of all time, man, and this was a this was a moment in time, the E90 M3, mm-hmm. the C63 AMG mm-hmm. versus the Audi RS4 versus the Lexus ISF. That to me, just bring four V8s and every one of them mm-hmm. had a different game plan. And yeah, yeah, they all every one of them was a fucking peach. Was a great car. If you're talking like two thousand out of that, I'm out of that out of that two thousand eight lineup. Which one of that are you picking right now? If to I had to own and up? have Lexus and ISF, Lexus, Lexus ISF, yeah. Yeah. which is a shame because I, I bet I, I I bet if you line them up, like if you looked at that period test, it probably came in last as far as all the driving dynamics. And 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 this and that, not by a lot. They're all very good, but I bet you that car came in last. Yeah, because the but other. But if you ones... had to live with it, I mean, that's what that's... you say, right? Like the M, the M three, that V eight and the E nineties is absolutely brilliant. I've driven so many of those. So good, yeah. They're very very fun. high revving, uh, very responsive RS four. High revving, very responsive. I Throw love all wheel drive. Throw an all wheel drive, my friend. C63, literally a fucking nuclear power plant for an engine, just Mm -hmm. crushing power. The ISF, the Japanese technology, a very sharpened blade. It's a great car. Um, I I don't know, but I bet you that comparison test right there, they probably would have put it in the order you just mentioned it. I think so. I bet you they said BMW first, Audi second. Dude, Mercedes I wish I would have thrown my old magazines because I had like the Motor Trend, the uh, Car and Driver, and <sighs> Automobile, brother. where they did all of those, you know. And that was yeah. one of my favorite issues. I still think that period in time was that was the coolest. Like everybody said, "Fuck peak, it, let's go V8 car." Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think so. I I really do. And all those cars today are still modern fast. Yeah, properly, properly modern fast. Just saying. Can can I can I throw a can I throw a wrench into the spokes here? Please do. The year is 2000. Mm. S U V. Oh. You go you go on Mercedes, you go on BMW. Mercedes, are we talking like G-wagons too? You could you could get a G at, you, you, could get a G, you could get a G500. Okay. You could get an ML55. Interesting. You could get an totally X, reliable. You could get an X X three. I don't think existed in two thousand. But nope. you could get an X. But you five. could get an X. You could get an X five four point six is. I think in two thousand. I think that was, or was that two thousand one? Two thousand two is what I'm the first the memory. first year that I. Uh, hmm, let me let's see. X five four point six is. Those M fives. Those early X five. Two thousand two. Yeah, I was fucking something right. Uh, the uh, early <laughs> the early X fives, I think, look properly stately. They look completely European. I just I love their design. I absolutely think it still looks great. All right, let's just for the sake of argument, let's just do that. M- ML fifty five or or X five four point six. X five. X five. I agree. Um, the ML is too soft. Serious, I, yeah. The the MLs I've driven. I haven't driven a nice. ML55. Um, I drove the 500, which might have come out. Yeah, that's the same period. 
yeah, it's the same same body style. I think that came a little bit later. Kind of like the uh, and I think it was like three hundred yeah. horsepower instead of good three fifty five. I think in the yep. the ML fifty five. And they're good. I I don't like those interiors. I don't like the way they're put together. I don't like the materials. There's I, a lot it, of Mercedes interiors kind of around that area that I didn't like. It was like peak cost cutting. I, there's a reason why they got the nickname uh, Alabama trash can because you know, they were built in Alabama, <laughs> right? Take, and, and so, dude, that C63, the early C63s, their interiors, not cool. You know what it's like. The the fir- the early CTSVs like the first gen CTSVs. Oh, that's the worst, absolute <laughs> garbage can interior. But dude, talk about I don't know how cheap those are now. I haven't looked in a while. For the longest time, twelve to fifteen k could get you a CTSV, and I I don't give a shit what anyone else. Said. Fuck yeah. the interior test thing. pipe installed. Like they yeah. were all like, yeah, yeah. Like, but seriously, yeah. when it comes down front to end it, angle kit, yeah, GM offering a performance sedan with a V eight rear wheel drive and no <laughs> automatic option. That is why that first gen CTSV in my heart is such Goated. a cool, right? It's it, we, it makes up for the interior, you know it. Yeah, yeah. But I agree with the X, the X, X five. This is and, true. I, and how about this though? Mm-hmm. Things to consider going the exact opposite of SUVs before we ran out of time here, um, and we'll we're, we won't get into seven series versus S class because. I have a really really good category I want to hit. So let's hit this one quick. What do you got? Z3 versus SLK. Go. Z3. Hands down. Yeah. 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 James. Agreed. Game over. Um, Special. Like I'm going to talk about truly special cars from each make. Okay. Mercedes. This is for you to digest and think about the 300 SL gold wing. Kind okay. of beautiful, cool, iconic. The old 6.9 race cars. Have you ever seen one of those like modern, like kept, fully restored? They're absolutely mm-hmm. just stunning looking. But yeah, the six, the six point nines. They're 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 bizarre. It's like the really four fifty SEC. I think was the six point. Yeah, the W the W one sixteen. That sounds um, right. Uh, yeah. SLR McLaren. Okay. Yeah. Uh the AMG black cars. Sure. I always yeah, thought yeah. the most badass That's looking Mercedes. CLK um, 63 black is um I so uh one of my homies at um at Cars of just bought one. Damn. Um he bought he like stole it. He got a killer deal on it and it showed up and it had like huge service records and all these things that like weren't even disclosed in the auction. Bonus. And it's like he, yeah, like really truly special car. Yeah, how about uh the GLA 63 and or GLA 45 and the R63 as just like bonkers. What the fuck? Yes. Um, um, that's my, that's my collection from Mercedes Benz and I'm giving them the win already. So next category. Yeah. I mean, it kind of is because what you go to BMW, you will have what the M1, which I yep. deeply love. I think that car is really cool. And then what? Like X1? <laughs> kind of not really. Um, uh, yeah. Uh, 850 CSI is cool and it's special, but it's not, it's pretty goddamn cool, but yeah, not, I mean, it's right. And then what, like I ate like, well, how about M3 CSLs? Those are pretty damn cool. E36 variety. Yeah. But it's, I don't know, like putting that up against like, yeah, no, it doesn't SLR McLaren or like even like AMG GT to come a little newer or SL like, like I, I don't know. Like the the specials aren't as special. I fully um, I fully agree with you uh, yeah. in that one. And I'm yeah. giving, I'm giving Mercedes Benz that category. Exactly. Uh, are you ready to like count tally up our nondescript boards? We've not been keeping track of score on. Yeah, not at all. I, oh. Boy, what sucks is like I wish I took kept track, but it almost feels like it's a split down the middle. So I have mine. Oh, okay. Um, I have BMW for the touring cars. I have BMW for the uh, BMW or M versus AMG. I have BMW for the BMWs. Yeah, Yeah. BMW for the M's, the motorsports. Uh, It's in the name, right? 
Uh, the mm -hmm. very special cars, I did give that one to Mercedes-Benz. And there was another option, transmission options versus BMW versus AMG. Everything, or uh, Mercedes. Mercedes is just so automatic heavy. I had to give BMW the win. Sure. Plus, there's some really good manual gearboxes from uh, BMW. So on my sh sheet, I did BMW. In my mental barely. Rolodex, yeah, I think barely. I barely, I think I barely go the other way because because uh, okay. we have the specials, have the 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 special yeah. compact like the E30, Ooh, the M3 SUVs versus though, my uh, SUVs. That's true. I don't know. Maybe it's real tail, close. Tail of the tape. Somebody, somebody who's been uh, listening along and keeping track while I haven't been react you need <laughs> right? to get in the get in the comments or whatever you know, it was really the transmission uh like you said i think that's what won the uh m versus amg for me too so i think that's a huge factor i think if we if didn't... mercedes threw more manual quality manual gearboxes on their cars i think we'd have a different discussion we never mentioned full-size cars which is i think clearly the s class over the seven series yeah 100 100 the, the mercedes sl exists Versus BMW has nothing. I feel like that counts for something. Um, so I, oh, we I could have know. done like Z3 M's and Z4 M's is kind of special. Uh, BMWs, those are neat. M yeah, Roadster, they're... Red M Roadster is really cool. I like that. Yeah, car. they're neat, but then like they're still like SLK32, Z8, BMW Z8. Yeah, Z8. Wow, how do we? I don't know. How do we not bring that up? Uh, yeah, that's a truly special car. It's the Z8. Um, I don't want to say the most special out of all of them, but that, that that's that's a good one. Well, um, we have to do it, man. Automotive grudge match. G -g -g grudge match. Let's go oh, to the scorecards. I, I give it to BMW. Barely, but I give it to them. And I think Frank. I barely go the other way. And I'm not even trying to be contrarian. I wish I was oh. keeping score, but I just, I've been drinking my knockoff Remy LaCroix over here. Um, <laughs> Mercedes-Benz. So, so we'll cut it right down the middle. Good grudge match. Uh, two history, uh, history heavy automakers. Mm -hmm. um, historical, um, historical, his historical. Um, you know what we should probably do in a, in a, in a, in celebration? Not PCP. We're gonna do that later. Yeah, uh, might have already. <laughs> I might have put the the uh, carriage in front of the horse on this one, but uh, carry on. Yes. What were you saying? Yes. Yes. Should I, um, should we celebrate by uh, me uh, quizzing all upon you? Oh, I like that. That sounds great. Mm -hmm. That sounds wholesome. Okay. Uh, so, so I'm going, is... I'm going to queue it up. You, t you tell the good people uh, who are hopefully playing along at home, how this works. Yeah. Sit on my lap and listen up. So mm -hmm. we're doing the automotive print ad quiz game show. It's not just the title. It's also informative. Frank in this time is going to, he's going to go in this ad. He uh, is conjuring up. Hopefully he's not Googling it right now, but he's going to pull up an automotive print ad from the eighties, nineties, early two thousands. He's going to read through said ad omitting anything that clearly gives it away. Cause I don't live on easy street here. Uh, I have three guesses to figure out what the hell car he's reading the ad for. Every time I fail miserably, he's going to give me a hint that doesn't help me anymore. And eventually, 10 minutes around the clock, I'm either going to die trying, 50 cent style. Get or, rich or die trying. Yeah, yeah I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to figure it out. So, Frank, hit me up, big guy. Vote or die. Okay, so um, this is a two-page ad. Mm -hmm. And I chose this ad because it's quite possibly the wordiest ad ad in the history of not just this game show but probably in the history of ads okay um it, it's over the top so this might take me a minute to get through it um and we're, we're just i'm just gonna jump into it okay let's do this 10 minute 10 minutes on the clock once i'm done reading all of these words <laughs> it is a two-page ad mm -hmm. on page one there's an enormous amount of words and then like a little sliver showing the profile, the driver's side profile of the car. Underneath it, it says, a small, beautiful, glossy picture of our new affordable luxury sedan. Like it even shouts out how small and apparently glossy. It says this image a is. small, glossy photo. It, it says, Not actually quote, a small, glossy. <laughs> quote, it, it is a small, glossy photo because it's all baked into the words. And it says underneath it, and I quote, a small, comma, beautiful, glossy photo picture of our new affordable luxury sedan how could you possibly say all about this sorry i'm already ruining it how could you possibly say all this about a thirteen thousand dollar car 
There are times when one big, beautiful, full, glossy picture of a car says absolutely everything you need to know. This isn't one of those times. Yes, the new blank possesses classy looks an aerodynamic styling that can slice through the wind like a Ginsu knife through a ripe red tomato. But the blank is not just a whole new car, it's a whole new concept. And that requires a bit of explaining. First off, the blank was designed to offer the level of quality, comfort, and technological advances normally found in luxury sedans, costing twice the money. And while that might sound like a lofty goal as you read along, you'll find that's precisely what we've accomplished. Let's talk about a few things, and let's uh, and let's talk about a few things that blank trademarks: handling and responsiveness. On wet or dry training course, the blank can out slalom a BMW 325i and an Acura Legend L sedan. I'm writing notes. Good. This, this is going to be note. I know because you, you're reading a book. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even a, an eighth of the way through. When equipped with optional ABS, it can outbreak a Lexus ES300. And the blank has the freeway merging power to quickly put a high-priced Mercedes-Benz 190E 2.3 in its rearview mirror. Now you're probably saying to yourself, a car like this for $13,000? How, how on earth can they do that? The answer, of course, is through a lot of practice. Practice that involves six years of building quality cars and making a constant refinement to the blank until everything works to absolute perfection. Take its robust 16-valve, multi-point fuel-injected, dual-overhead cam, 150-horsepower engine, for example. Rather than be content with typical nuts and bolts, we secured the blank's engine to its chassis with liquid-filled engine mounts. This added absorption significantly reduced vibration and engine noise. And, as testimony, the blank displays one of the most smoothest and quietest running engines blank has ever developed. Underneath the chassis, we incorporated front and rear anti-vibration subframes, like those normally found on cars with mind-boggling, not to mention bank account blowing, price tags. These subframes act as a cushion and enable the blank to provide a quieter ride at 55 miles per hour than a BMW 325i. So and thanks to BMW hate there. The throw in it. And thanks to our highly advanced, patented, multi million dollar robotic assembly system, the blank maintains tolerances between body panels that are as accurate throughout the car as a Lexus 300 e- ES 300s. Now, a darn good time to remind you that once again, now we're going to page two, that this is a $13,000 car. We heard that before. Did it register? Okay. There's more. The blank wasn't just designed from the ground up. It was literally designed from the inside out. So while the exterior size of the perfect, easy to park variety, its interior is remarkably spacious. In fact, its space is maximized to the point of the blank can comfortably fit five adults while providing more front end and rear heat, he- I don't know, front and rear seat headroom than a Honda Accord, a Toyota Camry, or a Lexus ES300, which is a Toyota Camry. But as you probably imagined, the place in the blank to be is the driver's seat. Here you'll be treated to comfortable, contoured, fully adjustable, reclining seat, and an instrument panel with large, easy-to-read analog gauges, standard power mirrors, windows, and door locks, and a cockpit meticulously tailored so that each and every control is within easy reach of your fingertips. If you want to splurge a little, yet still remain in the fiscally responsible ballpark, the top of the line, blank, offers a standard customized six-speaker CD system with individual amplifiers in each speaker, a power sunroof, a theft deterrent alarm system, and an automatic temperature control device that keeps the cabin temperature precisely where you want it to be, regardless of fluctuating temperatures outside the cabin. And if you desire more luxury, leather trim is available as well. 
Even the trunk is spacious and ergonomically designed. The trunk lid extends to the bumper, so it's easy to load or unload groceries. And we created, <laughs> I can't believe I'm still reading. <laughs> Uh, ba, 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 groceries, and we created a fold down passage to the rear seats. This allows you to fit skis or other long objects and still provide room for two back passengers. What about safety? At Blank, we've always believed that the best defense is a good offense, which is why the Blank employs a highly advanced anti lift and anti dive suspension system with super tow control that provides incredible steering response in panic, steer, and heartbreaking situations. But because all accidents can't be avoided, we took some precautionary measures, like equipping every blank with a driver's side airbag that has uh, uh, terminals plated in gold to protect against the effect of corrosion. We also gave the blank child safety rear door locks, front and rear crumple zones, steel door beams, over 40 other safety standard features and ABS brakes are optional on every blank model. Okay, we've protected you and your family. Now what about Mother Earth? The blanks are... <laughs> here comes some poetry. <laughs> There's no Earth dreams here. There's a haiku. Uh, <laughs> the blanks optional ozone safe air conditioning emits no CFCs. Its paint is waterborne. There's no asbestos anywhere in the car. The car is up to 75% recyclable by weight, and it's fuel efficient to the tune of 30 miles per gallon on the highway, 24 miles per gallon in the city. Well, that should pretty much cover the main points of this of interest. But if you'd like to learn more, just call 1-800-BURR-BURR-BURR-BURR-BURR. Oh, there's an extension, extension 602. And we'll happily send you to a freshly printed blank brochure. Mm. Oh, by the way, the brochure comes with a lot of big, beautiful, glossy pictures. That, my friend, is the world's wordiest advertisement. What was the beginning? A small, glossy photo? Uh, yes. Uh, a small, beautifully glossy picture of our new affordable luxury sedan. <laughs> That's all you needed. <laughs> One thing After I that. do. Can you do the engine real quick? Yes, that was a 16-valve multi-port fuel-injected dual overhead cam 150 horsepower engine. I'm sorry, the displacement again? Didn't say. Okay, so 16-valve MPFI, 16 valve. 150 horsepower. Dock dual overhead cam. I don't know where to go with this. <laughs> so <laughs> the first thing that stood out to me, surprisingly, is... Dude, the list of competition and comparison. I know that's why I liked it because you can like just like cross off the list. Acura Legend ES. So you had we're already in Japanese and German. It and then it said, "Fuck it, I'm taking on the Japanese 190. again." Accord Camry Lexus ES300, which was like you said, weird. Legend 190E. 190. And I tried to but, write what was down there. Like the I other, just figured it's like so much information. They want to attack themselves. Uh, you'd hope. Uh, so right. ES 300 brakes, it can outbreak that, uh, leaves the 192.3 in its rear view, uh, five adults, pretty good fuel economy, 150. So, um, 150 horsepower is kind of, that's kind of neat. That's kind of sticking out a little bit. It's a weird number. Um, mm -hmm. I think we're in the late eighties based on those cars that we mentioned. Yeah. no. No, early nineties. Like we're let's go let's go okay. let's go nineteen ninety right there. Nineteen ninety. Because the Acura Legend, the ES three hundred, the Accord and Camry are all in that conversation. The one ninety E is getting a little long in the tooth, but still there. Um what are we talking about here though, Frank? No, no drive count. So I don't know if it's all wheel drive, front wheel drive, rear wheel drive. I don't, don't think know. it mentioned. Didn't pick that one up in my notes. Nope. Uh no door count either. Sedan. Oh, yeah, that's right. They did say that, but that doesn't rule out that it has a coupe or other variant. True. So without it, with a stab in the dark, <laughs> do, I want to do you need more information or that I did I not? I don't need think there's actually that much information in there. Uh, <laughs> so I really want to think this. I, I want to say this is I feel like it's 
it's Japanese. I really want to think this is a Japanese vehicle because okay. it doesn't really read to me like a Volkswagen or uh, no, I don't. I don't really see a 150 Volkswagen. I, I I didn't. I thought a little bit of Audi, but then it's not really 150 right, doesn't right. resonate with me with Audi. So I'm thinking I'm thinking Mazda. I don't know why. Mazda okay. in the 90s. It would for 150 horsepower. It has to be all wheel drive or at four <laughs> it has to be a, a, a bigger uh, vehicle. Cause Mazda's four cylinders were small. The smaller displacement ones is let's take a stab. Let's get us started here. A Mazda 626 Frank final answer. That is a genuinely good guess. Okay. Okay. It is not. A Mazda 626. It is certainly a competitor the to the Mazda 626. Um, and uh, apparently every other fucking car that's out right now is a genuine right. competitor in some category. Well, okay. yeah, but you can cross off the ones that it named. So, like, it, that's like 50% of the entire automotive world. Um, let me just give you another outside of a competitor. Let me give you a different. Yeah, no more. Um, please, no more competitors. Um, this I'm gonna tell you. Okay, this was the very first model year of this nameplate, like make and model, and is still in production today. It was the first model from this make. It was this particular year. Uh huh. The make had been around for oh geez a okay. while. Gotcha. But the model, this, the this first... was the this the the first offering of this model by this make, um, and this model is still in production. Like never went out of production, has not gone out of production. This is the first offering of it, the first year of it. It has not gone out of production. It is still in production, um, unbroken, hmm. and a competitor to the sixty six. Which is out of production. I don't think we're talking about Honda or Toyota here. I'm just going to take a stab since they butchered their own self in competition. <laughs> uh, damn, competitor to the Mazda. It's not Infinity because none of their 90 stuff is around still. Um, what's left for Japanese, my friend? Oh, Nissan. Oh, Nissan could be it. They didn't mention any Nissans, my friend. I'm going down the list. I think the way to figure <laughs> this one out is to eliminate. <laughs> that's, that's what I'm saying. That's so, what I'm saying. Okay. Play, play okay. the game of whack a mole. This is so... I don't think it's a Corsica, but. A <laughs> well, there's no Chevy on there. Um, <laughs> Nissan. Oh, is this? Oh, is this a car we wish we saw more of? I think. Uh, probably not. <laughs> You don't think so? Uh, I, so the 626 competitor would be like a... If we're talking 1990, still around? This is tough. Wait a tick. Wait a second. Is this big Ultima energy, Frank? Is this the... Is this the <laughs> Nissan Ultima? <laughs> Pick a year, homie. Uh, let's go the Ultima. God, I want to say 1992 Nissan Ultima. 1993. Yes! Nissan Ultima. Dude! <laughs> the original OG Nissan Ultima. Hell yeah, dude. <laughs> that was hard fought. <laughs> oh. That was a fun ad, dude. It's... How the hell was that an Ultima ad? Okay, I'm going to click I, I sent you. I sent you the link. Um, dude, it's so goddamn wordy. Um, your, your link right, has right and wordy. Basically... Oh, what the? F this is a page <laughs> of script. It's two pages. Did you click over to the next page? Yeah, it's it's like the first one has 15%, 20%, no, 15% car. The next one has like 5% an image. It's like 2% logo. Yeah, it's it's, it's I stumbled, I I was like I I thought to myself I was like, "Oh, I want to find an ad for the OG Nissan Ultima because like why not?" 
Um, and this is the first one I stumbled upon. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> How did I get there with, on my second guess, dude? Because that is not an enthusiast car. There's no relevancy to this car anymore. And that engine, no one knows that off the top of their head. It's, it's the uh, it's the KA. It's the KA24 DE. That's a good motor. It's the same motor in the uh, 240, uh, 240SX. Is it? It is. They just spun it around, made a front-wheel drive. Same motor. Oh, that's right. That's right. That is right. But it we is. got that motor because we weren't good enough for SR20s or DETs. Right. SR20s. Yeah. And it's and it was uh it good was basically motor, but... it's a good motor. It's a good truck motor. Um, an SR20? <laughs> I'd rather have an SR20 in that. Oh, oh yeah, like un- undoubtedly. Um but yeah, I just like I was just like, oh, what's like a what's a what's a car that nobody utterly okay. forgettable, you but got like it's still around. You got dangerous on this one because that was a tough one, dude. I was like that genuinely was tough. I was the genuinely only thing... struggle. I thought about like, okay, if you can go down the list and figure out like, because they're not going to, they're not going to shit in their own bed. So you have to go through and like, okay, it's not a Honda or Acura product. It's not a Nissan. It's not a Toyota or Lexus product. It's basically not Germany. Um, Germany and, and, and try and figure out. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, they didn't shit on Mazda. That's why when you said six to six, I was like, that's actually really good. How guess. good of a like, shot of them. That was a good shot in the dark. Yeah. I think if I didn't go with that first, I could be totally lost on the whole thing. And I, and I was trying to think like, unless you were going to try and go like something quad four powered. Even but, then, because there were 150 horsepower quad fours, right? But it so. didn't. It didn't. So. It didn't really read like an American car ad, though. It did not. No, it's far too wordy for the average American to read. So I don't know. that was hard. That was really hard. Well done, sir. Thanks, man. That's a good, yep. good. I like how you picked like a fucking pedestrian econo shit box from the. I know. I talked like I talked like sixteen hundred words about <laughs> about All the right. fucking Nissan Altima. I need some recovery PC. Good ad. I would have never thought to pick a base model fucking Altima. Altima. Hey, they they said that you could option it out with leather and like automatic climate control and. Th- that was tricky. That was exceptionally tricky. Um... <laughs> That fucking ad, though. That's a good ad. Great ad. Can't wait to put that in the video. Um, <sighs> oh, boy. How, so, how do you want to celebrate, sir? Should I, uh, You want me to kick it off with the sh- shit I haven't been up to? So, yeah, the around these parts, we do a little PCP, also known as Project Car Progress, mm-hmm. to cover us from the feds. But what have you been working on, Frank, if you've been working on anything? What do you oh, think? boy. Um, I have been ordering parts. Um, I got a... I've been waiting for like two weeks for... A, replacement mirror glass on the gallant um it's supposed to arrive next week okay. but i ordered it like a week and a half ago so we'll see mm. that's kind of the missing link on that car and the rest of it is i i want to get the rear spoil the clear coat on the back spoiler has been been failing so i want to get that repainted and recleared um and then I've got, I don't want to sell it, but I kind of need to, but I don't want to. It's really complicated. Yeah, um, and that good. I need to, I need to make mental progress more than anything. Um, otherwise, you know, I'm just busy selling cars that aren't mine and, and um, driving places and taking pictures of other cars and doing things that aren't productive for me. They're productive for everyone else. How about you? How, how, what progress have you been making or not making? I've been super busy buying cars, which is what we should not be doing. God damn um, it. Yeah, it's horrible. Uh, Blazer Progress, uh, new clutch flywheel transmission rebuilt. So that's huge. That's going to overcome our issue there. I still have a bit of maintenance to catch up on. And the biggest thing with that Blazer is going to be doing, I, I have a headliner in my future, which sucks. Yay. And, uh, why have I become headliner guy? Headliner, uh, guy. headliner timing belt. That's all you do. Yeah, headliner. The, the worst job, just outsource them to me. Uh, mm-hmm. And the paint. I'm hoping I can pull in a Suzu Trooper, uh, reverse of fortune, and really get that paint to shine. Just up vomit on it? That paint's fucking gone, dude. Um, yeah. So uh, bringing that back on top of that, I do have a big job coming up for the NX. So these do not have a hydraulic uh, clutch situation. So there's no master and slave cylinder. They use a cable? clutch cable. Yes. Wow, SR20. I did not know that. SCRs do too. So I haven't done, I've never had an issue with a clutch cable car. So for the first time ever, I played, I think that's where it's coming from. The It feels like the clutch has nothing, nothing. And then it's like jar full of peanut butter and glass. So it's this oh, really good. weird feeling. It's because the cable is catching somewhere. Right over have time. Have you seen? Yes. Have you 
have you seen one guy one jar have you <laughs> yeah that's what i'm really <laughs> so it feels like i'm <laughs> pressing down i can feel a cable being pulled pressing out of a man's anus, anus. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know it <laughs> i know we just visualize the same thing too which is fantastic. Yeah, <laughs> uh, so with that car uh, you can feel that the clutch is over time they stretch and when they stretch, yep. they get caught up in different parts because there's two technically metal piece, pieces that move in a sheath similar to an ass uh, mm-hmm. with a, <laughs> with a broken one. pickle jar. Anyway, in it. Yeah. So the deal is it's a fucking pain in the ass to access. So you got to pull your intake, your battery, everything because it's on top of the trans, except it goes up obviously under your clutch pedal, which means me pulling out a seat out and my old elderly yep. man ass back contorting to get under mm-hmm. there. And it's not a clip. It's a literally operation to remove and line everything up. And then you have to tighten it to spec, like adjustments that need to be made. So fun. It's going to suck. Yeah. The part, I got an OEM Nissan one. I don't know how the fuck I found that. Yes. Made in Japan. They're super rare. uh, And I only paid like 42 bucks on eBay. And it came in two days. It was wild. Nice. Yeah. Uh, Good guy eBay coming through. Yeah, good. And I love eBay for that stuff. You got to know what yeah. you're looking for, though. Uh, so that's going to be my big NX project. And nice. that's a g- clutch feel on a manual car like that. Very mm-hmm. important. So Yeah, big worth deal. It. Worth it. Big, big deal. I'll close this down, too, man. It's um, yeah. It's yeah. been an episode. Uh, we struggled through it's been big, something. big ultimate energy. We had an right. awesome grudge match. And guys, I hope I hope you guys are enjoying it as much, as, even half as much as us, because I fucking love talking about this stuff. So yeah. Again, like we both thank you so much for checking us out, taking your precious time, your valuable time mm-hmm. to listen to us ramble on. We are another pointless automotive podcast, just what the world doesn't need. Yeah. Uh, you can follow us anywhere you listen to your podcast, review uh, the episodes, leave us some feedback, yeah. give us a rating. Grill us. Uh, yeah. Ask questions. We would love to have some questions to feed. Uh, wherever you listen to your podcast, you can find us. We have a visual component. Uh, piece of medium unfortunately on, yep. yeah on youtube uh feel free to subscribe we're running that again free subscriptions uh i actually take some time i edit i put some graphics in there it's kind of yeah. fun to check out so uh give it a watch uh check it out at the youtubes but other than that apa podcast instagram don't use it so don't even check it out uh but another point i saw the motive had podcast there uh frank yes where can the good people follow your personal work oh boy generally um creeping around the sewers um uh, unkempt and unwashed like a, a ninja uh, turtle <laughs> like <laughs> I, went there. I went there like uh, you're... not nearly not nearly as uh socially um important or beneficial as a ninja turtle um right. but uh yeah either if, if when i'm not uh creeping in the streets uh below um yeah the photographer's garage on all the things um uh, mostly instagram occasionally uh youtube how about you good sir yeah, no, you can follow me mostly on YouTube at Auto Obsessive Garage, as the That's shirt it. says. This uh, guy's rescues. got his own merch. I know, right? Check out the merch store. Uh, rescues, Bro. restorations, you know, reviews. Uh, check it out. I think currently we're doing the NX stuff, so it's pretty fun to see that car getting some work. It might be the only cool. NX restoration on the entire history of YouTube. And damn that's, what I, that's what I do. Uh, but check it out, guys, uh, in Instagram to a lesser degree, but uh again from the bottom of our hearts and top of our farts we thank you for checking out our little humble podcast and we really do appreciate it we love you guys we'll see you on the next one peace goodbye bye